Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. I hate digital comics, but I could not wait for the comic book store to open. Uh, somebody sent me some screenshots from this latest issue, and uh, you, you see how important this is to me. I'm actually checking that I'm recording in the first 15 seconds. So I just gotta say I'm not a Chicago expert, but I am pretty sure that this uh, background is uh, impossible. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you have to fold space and time like something out of Inception uh, to uh, get this vantage point of the uh, Chicago sign with whatever that building is called. Um, but uh, anyway, so this is uh, G.I. Joe number two. Uh, just to explain for people who uh, don't follow too closely, there's been a G.I. Joe comic called G.I. Joe, a Real American Hero, commonly known as G.I. Joe, A-R-A-H, written by Larry Hama, almost, well, not exclusively, but most, I'd say like 99% of the materials from him, over going on, I don't know, 35 plus years. Um, that's where most of the G.I. Joe lore comes from, all this, you know, the stuff with Storm Shadow, and, the, and the, that all started with him. Um, and uh, IDW has had the license for, I don't know, six, eight years. What they typically do is they do G.I. Joe A.R.A.H., which I think is in like the 300 issues. And then they do uh, another version of G.I. Joe. Um, uh, typically, uh, m m most of the time, just called G.I. Joe. What this tends to be is kind of alternate takes. We want to focus more on uh, the, the sci-fi element. We want to focus more on like the Tom Clancy vibe. We want to, you know, Aubrey Sitterson had his version, which was more of like professional wrestling style. And this one is gay. Like I'm not using that as a 1980s pejorative, you know, uh, like when these people in my neighborhood said that my Huffy bicycle was gay because it had purple stripes on the side of it. I'm sorry, it was awesome. Mac from It's Always Sunny would have said, that's an awesome bike. Um, but this is gay as in they're purposely trying to make it a gay book. But it fails because gay people already liked G.I. Joe, the regular version. Uh, uh, gay people also, vast majority, have no problem with the traditional Joe's, traditional masculine, masculinity, and they don't need taupe, pastel, and purple uh, sashaying Joe's. They don't. Need it. They don't. They don't. Um, so uh, this one's written by Paul Aylor and uh, I, not to make that big a deal of it, but Paul is gay. So what does he make G.I. Joe into? He makes it into this. Pastels and food talk and sitting on the ground, raising hands like children. And it's 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 so bad. I mean, this might sound really, really obvious, but Larry Hama is a U.S. Army Vietnam veteran and a martial artist. He wrote G.I. Joe, which is about combat soldiers and ninjas. And it's really, really, really good. What I'm saying is he's writing what he knows. He said often that he bases the the Joe characters, the main character, side characters on people he knew, specifically in the army. He's writing about the military and he's basing characters off of fellow veterans. Paul Aylor is basing them off of roommates and co-workers at what? Uh, uh, coffee shops, uh, tech startups, I'm guessing a, a co-op uh, grocery. Um, th this is like, seriously. This is G.I. Joe. This is G.I. Joe in 2017. Um, so the situation for this is that Cobra has taken over America and uh, G.I. Joe has been officially disbanded. They were kind of the resistance. Um, but uh, it's just awful. It's awful in every single way. So this is uh, Scarlet, who's being portrayed as a cruel ball busting superwoman she goes to a memorial for all the dead joes and then she knocks it down because strong wham whamins uh then we meet the uh main characters who again are just <laughs> this is embarrassing what is this skinny jeans and lattes and it's like oh they got the doggy wumpkins 
Th this is G.I. Joe. What the hell? Um, so yeah, this is it. These are the Joes. This is what they look like. It's it's a purse puppy petting zoo of effeminate. Well, the men are effeminate. The women are the men. Are, wait. It's so confusing that you got to think three times before you say it. The men are effeminate. The women are masculine. And then you got whatever the hell this is over here. Um, and uh, so <laughs> look at this. Look at this. It's like they, it, it's like Soul Cycle has a new class called GI Joe or size. This is embarrassing. How emasculating this is! <laughs> Tiger, you're up. So Tiger is a gay Laotian, and they really, really had to like hammer. It was was it Laotian or Cambodian? Like. The first issue was a ridiculous purse puppy petting zoo where everyone just said basically their well they said their um their like their race and their socioeconomic status. Uh they didn't give their gender identities because I'm not sure that they know what they are or they might change from page to page. But look, this is embarrassing. So he was recruited for GI Joe even though he was a delivery boy. So, why? There's this uh, there's a study where it basically said they, they were talking about, you know, how uh, children interact with toys. And they s said, why am I slurring all of a sudden? Uh, they said, boys want to be He-Man, but girls want Barbie to be them. It's a completely diametrically opposed way of playing with toys and interacting with fictional characters. So what you're seeing is it's not necessarily boys and girls, but it's masculine and feminine. Masculine people want to be that masculine ideal, while feminine people, even if they are men, want the characters to be them. So what do we get? We get everyone's kind of uh, mincing, although the, the women are like just cocked back, ready to rock, square jawed, super confident, and then the men look like this. <laughs> um, uh, so what happens is Tiger, whose lash game is on fleek, uh, is recruited for no reason, even though he's just in mesh shape. Didn't do anything that special. And uh, yep, please look at the screen. Please look at the screen. Please look at the screen. This is the G.I. Joe team in 2019. Notice the only ones with straight backs and squared shoulders are the women. The men are hunched over, effeminate, passive, and you know, visually coded to be gay. This this is this is not how you visually code a straight man. Um, were the GI Joes gay? It would be easy to have a you know representational percentage of it. The, the original GI Joe barely dug into anyone's social life or romantic life. So it's most likely the original crew from the 1980s, from the cartoon, from the comic, yes, probably anywhere from 1% to 10% of them were gay. But they weren't this. This is effeminate SJW hipster millennial beardo barista. Like, come on. Check out the approved body type on the world. Look, look at this little outfit. Oh, he's got décolletage. <laughs> Don't ask how I know the word décolletage. Look at this. This is not a comic. This is this is the level of art you get on a budget airline. The pamphlet on how, you know, the seat back is also a flotation device or the bottom of the seat. Look at this, it's just still going on. And what happened is he got beat up by the woman, but he just, he wants to win. He just wants to win. So then we got this weird encounter group. Look at this color is stupid. <laughs> I don't know, that's like the, it's like the card like the child draws. Um, that's a, that's a minor quibble. Um, but uh oh oh he's still just 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 god look at her she's so bored men they're stupid men are canceled <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry i am sorry 
no man raises his excuse me like and of course she's just like yeah let me answer for this twink over here <laughs> roadblock is the first 275 pounds of bustle twink and again let's notice how uh pastels and pinks and purples and magentas I guarantee you there is a freaking literally literally millions of gay men who grew up watching the original G.I. Joe and they liked it and they loved it and they never said you know I feel like it needs more purple magenta and pink and just an effeminate guy just just crouched on the ground and then they all come and hug him and this is Okay, I gotta skip a couple pages for the copyright gods. Uh, but basically, uh, to make him feel better about himself, they all attack her at once and then they let him, uh, they let him get, come on, dude, seriously, comicsology. Then he's all happy to get a punch in. In the most chicken shit, cheap shot way ever, because it's all about what? Is it about heroism? Is it about bravery? Is it about loyalty? Again, SJWs always forget what Larry Hama said. G.I. Joe is not a power fantasy. It's a loyalty fantasy. The idea that you're going to get a bunch of uh, uh, effeminate uh, barista. Oh, God. He's getting these. He's like, you know, he's like, ow. Um, of course, she has no makeup, no lips, because men are women and women are men. And there's 537,000 genders. But yay, I'm going to get a cheap shot. It's going to make me feel good about myself. This is... No, you screwed up every single part of G.I. Joe. Uh, am I going to review this? Yes, because it's going to be a hilarious trash fire. And it's going to be probably about 3,000 by issue 4. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to guess 3,200 copies. And again, the main uh, G.I. Joe, which looks pretty darn cool and is actually going up. Its uh, sales are rising in a falling market and a shrinking market. Um, because they introduced this female snake eyes, but she looks cool. They built her up and uh, she works. She's accepted They got the K Zama who I, I really like his art. He's the one doing death's head uh, over at Marvel Just a little setup for a story, but um Yeah, so uh, just to reiterate uh, gay people uh, grew up on G.I. Joe in the 80s and 90s. They loved it and Nobody wanted it to be this just uh, weird SJW millennial hipster weirdos want it to look like this. Nobody said, we need more uh, mincing and purples and pastels and magentas. Nobody ever said that. This is going to be a horrific, horrific sales disaster. So anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still... Oh, I forgot to, oh, I, I forgot to show that. So uh, the, the God King, uh, we just finished... The uh, uh, back and front of both the main cover and the variant cover, it, it's kind of tricky because the aspect ratio has to be a certain aspect ratio, but it also can't, you know, reveal what God King looks like. So we got this, and this one is just, we went through many iterations of this back page, and we finally settled on this, and I'm just so happy. Bob did a fantastic job. We got Kyle Ritter art, art on the front. We got... Uh, uh, Aaron Alfici uh, art on the back and uh, it just looks like a freaking million dollars so uh, now we got both of the cover files because the cover files are different than the interior files we got the interior files have been you know done for I don't know a couple weeks actually uh, the uh, the back cover front cover of both the main and the variant uh, that's done so uh, we're basically off to the races next week. Very, very exciting. So you still got time to uh, back it. Uh, people were telling me to change this to the Ethan Van Skyver art, but again, the, uh, the aspect ratio did not work out. You would have gotten like something like this where it's just like the bottom half of God King, or you would have gotten something like this where it's like Cuffs and God King and the Demon Gods, but then it's just like the top of uh, Silkworm's head. I've actually seen some layouts of covers where they factor in that you're going to need a 16 by 9, you know, preview image. So they'll have like a box in the middle, which I think is is pretty, uh, pretty smart. Um, so uh, just to reiterate, 
You got the uh, the main cover, which is the Ethan Van Skyver. You got the uh, variant, which is Kyle Ritter. You got the two pack. This is actually two of the Ethan Van Skyver because that's the main. This is mainly for um, international backers. You get together with a friend wherever you are. Kuala Lumpur, freaking Guam. I, I know Guam is America. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. I meant to say East Timor. East Timor. Um, uh, Australia, South Africa, uh, UK. Oh my gosh, I love your mail service, UK. You all, y'all are beautiful. I swear, if something got damaged, like they would like open the book, take it to the printers, and like low key print a new. They're like, I didn't print this. This is actually higher quality paper. <laughs> the UK, they're like, ah, oh, the Americans, they 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 bunged it up. So don't worry, ah, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not even trying the UK accent. Don't worry, we, we printed another one. It's fine. We also fixed some of your typos. There are no typos that I know of currently. Um, uh, so then you got the signed God King book plus pinup for a hundred dollars. But I actually sweeten that deal. It's actually two books and two pinups. Um, I, you can't change the name of the of the uh, the tier once you um once it has one backer but that's what it's going to be so if you do the one hundred dollars that's two books with two the two different covers two different pinups and the two books signed for one hundred dollars and i believe if i remember correctly shipping is included internationally for that one hundred dollar one so that's also a sweet deal for uh international backer so go check it out and uh, i will be Going to the comic shop uh, most likely later today because I got Squirrel Girl 50, I think, came out. And you know I want to rip that one. <laughs> you know I do. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.